Did anyone else make it? Scanning. Just dust and echoes. We're all that's left. We did what we had to do. For Earth. An entire Covenant Armada obliterated and the Flood. We had no choice. Halo. It's finished. No. I think we're just getting started. Halo, it needs no introduction. It's the story of humanity as we struggle for survival against a vast, brutal, fanatical alien empire called the Covenant. I need to talk about the backstory due to certain reasons. It's hard to use the wikis for they've been infected, so I instead went straight to the source, the original unedited Halo novels. But to address any clashes of canon, the games take priority always. The novels only fill in the gaps. A hundred or so years from now, due to unrest and war, a single world government rises from the ashes, and things were actually good. We colonize space, and in classic sci-fi nature, there's a rebellion in the outer colonies, as in, they have entire fleets in space and have access to nukes, which they've killed three million people already. In a few decades, this would lead to a crippling civil war. And uh, due to the nature of insurgencies, the blunt hammer of the UNSC wasn't cutting it. Thus, the Spartans were born, biologically enhanced warriors, acting as the scalpel cutting into the heart of the insurgency. However, uh, aliens showed up and were killing all of us. A pretty bad time for all involved. Halo takes place in the last months of this war that has been raging for 27 years. A grim fatalism has gripped humanity, as dozens of worlds and billions of humans have perished in this genocide. The outer colonies are gone, and the inner colonies are burning. Our extinction is inevitable. On the UNSC stronghold of Reach, it was estimated that we have only months left. And if Reach fell, we would only have weeks. There was a desperate last ditch plan, Operation Red Flag. All remaining and available Spartan 2s were summoned. The mission, capture a Covenant ship, then using this to infiltrate their homeworld and capture one of the Prophets. This could be used to force a ceasefire or for us to surrender. You know, this is actually identical to the Spartans' very first mission. Regardless, mustered were 25 Spartans and the greatest AI ever conceived, Cortana. Yet they were all stowed on the Pillar of Autumn, an old yet sturdy ship that's been upgraded with the very best engines and weapons we have ever made, helmed by the best officer in the Navy, Captain Keys. With a second AI on board, elite ODSTs and a battle-hardened marines and crew, this suicide mission might actually work. Yet before the Autumn could leave the system, Reach was invaded. Operation Red Flag was aborted, as all Spartan 2s were redeployed groundside, as the Pillar of Autumn joined the fleet. As the fighting went on, the first Covenant fleet was brutalized by the orbital Mach cannons and from the efforts of Noble Team. However, it was around this time the Second Covenant Fleet arrived. The Battle of Reach would wage on for five weeks. On the last day of brutal fighting, a Third Covenant Fleet arrived. The Spartans were ordered to defend the orbital defense generators. These powered the orbital Mach cannons, the last line of defense. Yet there was a space station above Reach, Gamma Station. It had been brutalized, but its nav data had not been wiped out. It could lead the Covenant to Earth. So Master Chief broke off with two Spartans as they blasted into orbit to raid the space station. It was at this time the Pillar of Autumn engaged what seemed to be the head of the Covenant fleet. And just like their own ship, this one was unique, and its lasers were as fast as lightning. A so-called sniper ship, the only one in existence. Yet it was brilliantly destroyed, 
but at a great cost. The Autumn took a tremendous beating, and his armaments are completely depleted. John 117 had destroyed the data, and escaped with four marine survivors. Sergeant Johnson and Private Jenkins were among them. Yet, one of the Spartans, James 005, was killed, and Linda 058 was critically wounded. They linked up with the Autumn, and Linda was put into cryo, as Reach was on the verge of breaking. All contact with the Spartans' ground side was lost. They were cut off deep in Covenant territory, as most of them have died. Unknown at the time, some of them were alive, and they were falling back to Castle Base. Yet as the Chief was put into cryo, Keyes got an emergency broadcast from an old acquaintance, Dr. Halsey. She had been working on a fragment of Cortana that needed to be linked up with her core. The survival of mankind depended on this fragment. The Autumn made an emergency landing, making hasty repairs at the last human-controlled dock on the planet. As Noble Six fought through and linked up, handing the fragment over and giving his life to give the cruiser its window. The Pillar of Autumn was the last ship to escape the fires of Reach as they made a blind jump into space, as behind them, Reach had finally fallen. Now the rules. 1. We must save every marine that we can. 2. We must remove every threat. The more we kill, the less it will threaten humans here or elsewhere. 3. We will play on heroic, as Bungie considers that the canon difficulty. Now, you might assume that no one escaped from Halo. You couldn't be further from the truth. There is, of course, Sergeant Johnson. Everyone knows about that. But we have evidence from Bungie Cannon. There are two confirmed survivors, and both of these men survived to the end of the war. Sergeant Marcus Stacker, an American hero, and Private Chips Dubbo, a true blue Aussie legend, and technically, a third guy. Sergeant Thomas Chang, who only appears in the Halo 3 Believe campaign, and to this day, no one knows how exactly they got out. To escape Halo, they would have need to fly out of there, and uh, these guys would not know how to fly a Pelican, let alone a Covenant ship. So we can assume someone else had to fly them out of there in a Pelican, and I know for a fact these guys would have had a squad. There would be a group of marines with them, and you can fit a lot of people in these things, so there is a very real chance that some of the people you saved actually escaped Halo. But honestly, it doesn't matter. Every person that we save is another man able to fight another day. There are 43 casualties here, 28 marines, 15 crew. In total, there are 29 survivors who don't need to be saved. 10 marines and 19 crew. And here, there are 27 people we save. 24 marines and 3 crew. The Pillar of Autumn is too close to the Sacred Ring to be destroyed, so the Covenant have boarded it. Cortana, using the upgraded Mac cannon, has managed to destroy 4 Covenant ships and heavily damaging another, yet the cannon has been disabled by the Covenant boarding party. And Cortana? Hmm? Let's give our old friends a warm welcome. I've already begun. You heard the lady! Move like you got a purpose! This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Man, we let those dumb bugs out to the middle of nowhere to keep them from getting their filthy claws on Earth. But we stumbled onto something they're so hot for that they're scrambling over each other to get it. Well, I don't care if it's God's own anti-son-of-a-bitch machine or a giant hula hoop, we're not gonna let them have it. What we will let them have is a belly full of lead and a pool of their own blood to drown in. Am I right, Marines? Sir, yes, sir! Mm-hmm. Damn right I am. Now move it out! Double time! Kino. Right, we get woken up by Cortana's garbage driving. Yet, right out of the gate, for the most part, there's nothing we can do. After lots of testing, the crew here are completely scripted to die. What we will do is shield our boys with our armor. Usually, up ahead, this guy usually dies, but we can stop that. 
We need to jump past this moraine, blitzing ahead. You need to run past this exact line and boom, he's alive. And uh, the doors won't close. Although don't worry, it will literally take five minutes for someone to die. So you can just waltz over towards the bridge, no problem. Captain Keys. Good to see you, Master Chief. Things aren't going well. Outgunned and outmanned. Captain Keys is going to manually land on the ring while the combat teams repel the enemy until the rest of the crew escapes. We get his gun and we do just that. This will act as our rifle and a plasma pistol will be our sidearm. It's actually more useful than you'd think. We hit the ground running. Up ahead is the mess hall. There are two marines here and three more on the other side. Removing this squad, we then push against the Covenant at the back and always concentrate on the grunts. These boys wipe marines with nades all the time. Everyone's alive, easy. Although for some reason, there's a glitch with the Master Chief collection. There is a sixth marine here. So always Sergeant Johnson, he just stands there. He doesn't move or react, but I saved him too. But I don't count him. Moving forward, getting the jump on this elite, we run into three marines. Just keep ahead of them and they won't be a problem. However, in the next room, we turn the corner and we see these two get ripped apart. Well, your boy, Saint Jam, is back at it again. We can actually save them. Just touch this pole, then move back past this airlock, and after about seven seconds, the bots will activate. But the explosion won't go off. However, the marines will die in one shot. It'll take a lot of tries, but with that perseverance, you can push through and save them. They even join in with some dialogue. Go on ahead, chief. We'll secure this airlock. Up ahead, there are three marines and some barricades. Man the barricades and keep the degenerates away from the children. <laughs> Pushing to the right, we fall upon the enemy and deal with the reinforcements. After that, the boys are all good. Up ahead, when you turn this corner, there are two more marines here. Just simply flank the enemy, take them all out with precision. The boys will follow and to keep them safe, stay in front, giving the Covenant no ground, avenging the many who have perished this day. The boys will hold this airlock and up ahead, it's a pretty tricky part. Two crew run out and are cut down mercilessly. The best strategy is to chuck a plasma nade and shoot through this gap to distract the enemy. And luckily, the crew will dodge death narrowly. It is pretty difficult, but with enough tries, you'll get there. We're all gonna make it, boys. Do be mindful. Don't take any med packs. They need it a lot more than we do. Up ahead, you'll hear this classic line. Covenant, on the landing above us. There are only four marines in this room. These stairs go up, and we can easily put the pressure on the aliens above, using a few grenades here and there. Afterwards, the marines will mostly be stuck here, but that's no problem. There isn't a whole lot to say until we get back to where it all started. You know, we can and will remove those alien dogs. By chucking a bunch of plasma grenades here, we actually get them. Now, Hidden through the vents as we crawl our way through to the end, make sure to get the jump on them here as we save two more marines. They'll follow as we push through some hallways, flanking more troops as we get to these barricades. We make very short work of them with grenades. And as we head around, we save three more marines. And that's it. We head onto the lifeboat and make our way down. Punch it. Ah, sir. When the order was given to abandon ship, most of the cryopods, including the one holding Linda 058, were ejected into space. As Echo 419 and the other pilots are scrambling, getting the pelicans out, in the engine room is the detachment of elite ODSTs, 130 of them, under the command of Major Silva and Lieutenant McKay. These two are important, remember them. The ODSTs are so effective, They've had to pile up corpses of Covenant as cover. When the crew had evacuated, it was their time. They took the secondary AI in the ship with them, Wellesley, as they boarded their drop pods and descend towards the ring. 
On the way down, they see a butte, covered in a forerunner structure, as Covenant are occupying it. The Major Silva and Wellesley realize if they were to set up a defendable fortress, it had to be here. They'd have to fight for it. 125 of the ODSTs make it groundside, as their drop zone becomes the rally point for all survivors. There are 18 casualties, 17 marines and one crew, yet there are 22 people we will save, 18 marines and 4 crew. Unfortunately, there is nothing we can do for our boys but to avenge them. Covenant reinforcements come in and we deal with that. Banshees screaming down, we obliterate that. Right off the bat, we are bringing some serious pain to the Covenant. Moving forward however, we actually run into survivors. Four marines and two crew. You already know this, but the best way to save them is to push and tie down the enemy. The best defense is a good offense. It turns into a slaughter as we remove all the Covenant, just as they're touching down, or if they're quick enough, before they can even jump out. There will be a few of these, but nothing we can't handle. Having done that, Echo 419 comes down upon us, deploying a Warhog as one man hops in the back, as the rest jump onto the pelican, as they will link up at the rally point with the rest of the survivors. We surge forward, and we see Cortana's brilliance in action. This cave is not a natural formation. There's nothing to mention, although I always keep the warhog back. I don't want our boys to get injured at all, as I push in and slap the enemies around. Now, the next part, there are three crash sites. It's important to not go here first. Some marines actually get left behind. So instead, head to the drop pod, grab the sniper, and head to the cliffs. There are three marines and two crew taking cover here. Using the sniper, we honestly make short work of the pitiful alien. They really do not stand a chance. Moving into the structure, we link up with the boys and we pull them out as they all make it to the pelican safely. Moving out, we move to the hills above the structures next. Just drive past everything and push this area up here. There are only three marines here, but we can easily save them by doming some coveys. Just hold this area and make short work of everything that comes our way. Once that's done, the boys all hop on and they all make it out, no drama. All right. First, deal with these banshees and any other covenant hiding the valley. It's the least we can do. Now we can make it to the very last group, as we come in swinging and wipe the floor of these things. Now in the rocks here, there are seven marines in total. Now just like the very first group, keep the pressure on the enemy, taking them out as they get dropped off. And make sure to shoot the dropships to draw their fire upon yourself. It'll take a hot minute, but in the end, we get them all. Finally, as Echo 419 arrives, the marines come down. Sometimes five of them will jump on, sometimes six. This time, six of them hopped on. I was going to try to push this last marine with the warhog, but the mission ended. And as you can tell, everyone's hopped on, including the guys on the warhog. No drama at all. We did our absolute best to save as many as we could. The level is over, but not our mission. After this, the chief is dropped off at another crash site, and another one, as he would go on to save 41 more people. In total, 63 survivors. Finally, hours later, when the last group has been rescued, Master Chief is finally brought to Alpha Base. The marines had taken the butte, and even repelled a counterattack of over a hundred ghosts. Since then, the marines have done well, setting up camps and makeshift quarters, a mess hall, medical center, all within the underground forerunner structure. John takes his time to have a meal and actually get some sleep. Cortana found out that the captain was taken alive, and he was taken to the ship that she damaged. The Truth and Reconciliation. The Master Chief is summoned by the commanding officer, Major Silva, who doesn't really like him. But the plan is simple, assault the Covenant ship head on to liberate Keys. And this will double as a distraction for Lieutenant McKay with a contingent of ODSTs and Marines who will raid the crashed Pillar of Autumn for supplies, ammo, food, scorpion tanks and fuel for the Pelicans. Barring the ODSTs and their own pods, the marines landed with nothing but the clothes on their back, but it can be surmised that a little under half the crew survived, 
possibly at least 500 survivors. There are 12 casualties here, all of them marines who had been captured and executed. Yet, there are 29 people we save. 23 marines, the captain, and actually, 5 ODSTs. That's a lot of people, you'd be right. Okay, if everyone keeps dying, you keep getting more reinforcements. You get 5 extra men here, and then 5 more men at the grav lift, then 5 more join you to head inside, and then 5 more drop inside the ship. So if you keep the original groups alive, all these men will live. Right, as the mission begins, we start with 5 ODSTs. It doesn't look like it, but these are supposed to be the one and only Hell Jumpers. With the sniper rifle, we honestly make short work of every threat. Pushing forward, being the tip of the spear, as all the enemies are drawn to us until we push all the way through to the grav lift. Although very quickly, pick up the cloaking and take out as many enemies as you can as five marines drop in, ready to assist. This part is a little hectic, I won't lie. But with enough firepower and grenades, we tie down the enemy with no drama. Until the hunters arrive, but they literally die in one shot. It's sad. With that, there's nine people? Well, that's because one of the boys gets stuck and stayed back here. That's no problem. As the marines join us in the assault, the ODSTs will loot this entire area of weapons, turrets, anything that's not bolted down, and bring it all back to Alpha Base. As we go up, you deal with this famous little conundrum. The biggest threat are the stealth elites. The lads just do not see them. But without any shielding, they go down real easy. You gotta be quick, and keep an eye on your motion tracker, but jumping all over and removing the scum along the way, it's not bad until the hunters run in, but we distract and get rid of them. Having done that, the hardest part is done. We leave the marines here as we push on ahead, clearing out the way thoroughly before bringing them through and repeating the process in the next room, and the next, and so on. It'll be a little hectic and pretty stressful, but with the checkpoint system, if you bring your A-game, they'll all make it. Now, as we reach the top, right where this drop ship is, this is critically important. As you walk through this hallway, there's a loading point. Hit it, but then walk back, then walk back again. Keep doing this until all the marines are looking at the drop ship. This means they will not follow you. Having done that, we push forward and cause some real hurt to the enemies as we find our man. <sighs> Coming here was reckless. You two know better than this. Thanks. We rally all the survivors we can. The captain and three men. Marines, let's move. Yes, sir. sir. Okay, sir. Chief, you have the point. On the way back, we do the same thing. Applying pressure and being in front. Taking out everything. Once we run into the Covenant Bridge here, You'll notice there are no dead marines, and once we push out, all of them are alive. Yeah, it turns out, by them hanging in this corridor instead, they all live, as we bring all eight marines and the captain to the alien dropship, as we all escape. This operation really pisses the Covenant off. We blew our way in, liberated some prisoners, and escaped all without losing a single man. That's gotta hurt. All whilst the task force sent to procure supplies from the Pillar of Autumn succeeded. They were ambushed by a large force of hundreds of banshees, ghosts, and a few wraiths, but they broke through and brought dozens of warhogs, four scorpion tanks, supplies, and munitions, all to Alpha Base. The Covenant now perceived the human survivors as a very real and genuine threat as they cobble up a commando team to hunt down the demon. When we get back, there's no rest for the wicked, as after the captain wakes up, he immediately prepares to personally head out to capture a weapons cache before the Covenant get to it. Whilst sending out Master Chief to find something called the Silent Cartographer, which will lead us to the control room of Halo. There are 15 casualties here, 
13 marines and two pilots. There are six people we can actually save. Six marines. We hit the ground running with seven marines. We push the beach in one of the most iconic moments in all of gaming. After clearing it out, we can take a breather. Although normally, when you go through this mission, all the marines are scripted to die. You are not supposed to save them. Not if I can help it. All you need to do is play normally. Push through the beach, taking out every covenant dog you get your hands on. Don't forget to take out this elite behind the door. We can't show any remorse here. As we push through to the other side of the island, you see this warhog. You can do it later, but grab it and bring it all the way back to the beach, and then walk all the way back. As we continue on avenging the other marines that were sent here, once we see this, we unlock the door from before. Yet as we've done this, another pelican arrives and is shot down. Walk all the way back to the warhog, drive up, clear out the aliens, just like before, take this warhog and bring it back to the beach. Now, we can save these marines, but only the marines that hop onto the warhogs. <laughs> Regretfully. One of the marines will need to stay behind. Trust me, I've tried this trick and it doesn't work. They need to be in the vehicles. So I leave it to chance. Instead of choosing who to stay behind, I let them decide amongst themselves. We salute this brave soul. Hit F in the comments for this man. Now, bring them all to this building. Drive them down one at a time. You need to get them in just like this. One warhog pressed up against the wall. I kind of whack it in place just to be sure. The middle warhog, same thing, but it cannot be touching the back wall for some reason. Then bring in the last warhog face first like this. Now jump around and shoot your gun. If any marine is not looking at you, they will die. If this happens, take them all out, bring them here, and keep them grouped up and then try again. All right, we can safely move ahead, taking out every single misbegotten alien, grunt, elite, and hunter ahead. Reaching the bottom, we find the silent cartographer, and it points us to where we need to go. We try to inform the captain, but he's gone off grid for some unknown reason. We push all the way back up. Holy crap, Chief, that was totally poggers. Once you're out here, we actually did it, boys. The boys are alive. This is honestly the most cathartic feeling. Right, moving up, taking out the cloak deletes. Foehammer meets us at the top, but there's no rush here. Head back in, grab all the hogs, and bring them out. Look at that. These marines and warhogs will all be picked up later. So, to fortify this area, I'll put one warhog on the left to cover our flank. One warhog in the middle to provide fire support and the last warhog to cover the main entrance. With this setup, they'll be able to defend themselves perfectly. With that, however, we hop onto the pelican and dust off. We've done what we can in this battle. It's at this point, Alpha Base is in full swing. They have anti-air batteries made up of human and covenant turrets manned all over that are overlapped with automatic miniguns controlled by the AI Wellesley. As there are pelican drop pads with flights and medical teams on standby, as there are regular human patrols and outposts all around the butte, using warhogs, captured banshees and ghosts, and if anyone comes under assault, there is a rapid reaction force ready at all times, pelicans with a full complement of ODSTs. However, it's at this point that Captain Keys is missing. He's been captured by the Flood, as this force burrows into his mind as he's using every ounce of his willpower, every agonizing second of every minute he fought as he was trying to dig into his mind, trying to find protocols, procedures, Earth. The only way to buy time, Keys began to feed his memories to this insatiable force. One scrap at a time, his childhood memories, the taste of a favorite meal, his family, all being torn apart as this darkness devours his mind. There are 43 casualties, 41 marines and 2 pilots, as we will go on to save 11 of our own, all marines. This is a fun but stressful mission. Skipping ahead, the mission starts with no problem as a pelican bursts through, and we assist them by removing the banshee. I didn't think there were any human forces left on this part of the way. 
Well, okay. This proves that there are other marine groups out there that are either cut off or acting independently of Alpha Base. Moving ahead, dealing with this special elite and clearing these rooms, we go to unite with the three marines here, yet they are under heavy assault. We need to remove the two gun nests and shoot the wraith to make it target us. Then we push forward, dealing with the trash and getting ready to do an epic trick shot on the ghost. <laughs> To play it safe, stay away from the marines so they'll stay back. Take the ghost and remove the wraith. Forget the warhog, the marines will follow us through hell, so don't worry about them. Moving up, literally around the next corner, there are three more marines. Rush in. We can't run people over in a ghost, so move in front and remove the alien. Brilliant. We actually get to use one of the four scorpion tanks. Four marines will hop on and two will run behind. From here on out, there really is no problem, as we use the scorpion tank as an artillery piece, brutally removing anything and everything in our way. Now and then, Banshees will try to ambush us. They're a threat, so we prioritize them. Advancing through the bridge and safely out of the cave, it's important, once you're up here, head to the right. We can easily snipe the Covenant armor, tech out any ambush, deal with the Banshees and the Hunters. But that's not all. Go back the other way, take out the next group, and poke your head in and deal with this cloaked elite. No survivors, no remorse. Now. We can move on to the last part, where there are five survivors falling back from a pair of hunters. Obviously, we slap them around. A dropship will pop in, shoot it to get its attention. After this, in total, there are 11 marines following us. Damn proud of our boys. Right, pick up this cloaking and move ahead, getting some sneaky kills in there, and removing as much of the Covenant as we can. Honestly, this part is really easy. The only threat is, again, the Banshee. Once that's out of the way, we did it. Mostly. Head down here and take out any stragglers. Now, having done that, all the men are saved. Cortana to Fire Team Zulu. I've sent a distress call tagged with your current position. Hold your position and await evac. They've done their part. It's time for them to withdraw, rest, and prepare for future conflicts. And going through the rest of the mission, we get here. Steal the Banshee, removing every threat that dares stand up to us, clear out the bridge, go down and remove the Covenant armor, but then come all the way back up, deal with the Hunter reinforcements, and once they're gone, move down here. There'll be a lot more enemies to kill. And once you finally get to the bottom, there'll be even more reinforcements guarding the control room. And as we said, the more of them gone, the better as we go on to lay waste to the Covenant by any means necessary. Until finally, we get to the control room. We insert Cortana, as she has a bit of a power trip. She discovers something. Yes, the Forerunner built this place, what they called a fortress world, in order to... Wait. No, that can't be. Oh, those Covenant fools. They must have known. There must have been signs. Slow down. You're losing me. The Covenant found something, buried in this ring, something horrible, and now they're afraid. Something buried? Wh the Captain, we've got to stop the Captain! Keys? What the weapons we cache he's looking for, it's not really- We can't let him get inside. I don't understand- There's no time! Get out of here, find Keys, stop him! Before it's too late! It's at this time, Alpha Base comes under attack. Instead of hitting us head on, the Covenant use a pelican and a human pilot they captured. They get clearance to land in one of the drop pods, and the pelican, filled with 30 stealth elites, land in one of the pads. At the last moment, Wellesley realizes the ploy, yet it's too late, as all hell breaks loose. The entire crash team, half the medics, and a third of the marines at the drop pad are killed within minutes. Alarms go off as all nearby marines and ODSTs rush out, many not even wearing armor as they fight back. Pelican fuel was used to burn the pad and the bulk of the elites, but this havoc removed the anti-air turrets and allowed the six Covenant dropships to arrive. At the last moment, the AI miniguns come online and take out one dropship, and forces them to deploy 150 Covenant troops on the opposite side of the butte. Yet, they charge into two buried Scorpion tanks and Marines in trenches. 
they get brutally shredded. The battle was over, but turns out they were actually here for the Master Chief, as a small group of stealth elites peeled off and cut their way through the crew within the depths of the base as they hunted for the demon. Having failed, it seems one of them managed to escape and a captured Banshee. It's unknown how many died, but at least a hundred. But Alpha Base survived, and with it, hope. I won't be counting the flood, only marine bodies. Right, there are 24 casualties, 22 marines and 2 pilots. There are 12 people we can save, all of them marines. Since Keys went missing, there have been 2 other fire teams, 2 other rescue missions that have come here to find them. Yet we've heard nothing back, and we are the third and final rescue attempt. We see a crashed pelican and a downed covenant ship, as we see figures in the background. Pushing through the facility, we clear everything out until we run into the crazed marine. He's been here for a while. Stay back! Stay back! You're not turning me into one of those things! I'll blow your brains out! Get away from me! He will most likely die from the flood very soon. The only thing we can do for him is leave him and allow him to go out on his own terms. We have no right to take his life. We run into more bodies as we burst in. We find the recordings of Private Jenkins. We see that the Covenant released what they call the Parasite, the Flood. We see Keys, Johnson, Jenkins, and the rest of the squad get overwhelmed. Jenkins! It's at that moment they attack us. We tear into them, pushing through the facility, removing every single threat, Covenant and Flood alike. Make sure to stay behind and remove everything. This is important. The Flood don't respawn, and after heading deeper into the facility, at this area do not run in. There are actually three marine survivors down here who will die instantly, not if we can help it. Use a pistol and start clearing out the room, throwing grenades and causing a racket. Slowly, more spores will come up. Deal with them. After doing this for about a minute or two, the room is mostly cleared. Jump through and burn the flood underneath with the shoddy. After containing that last threat, all the marines are alive. It's actually pretty easy. They will hold here. Maybe they'll catch their breath before trying to leave, or they might make a last stand. I like to think, law-wise, that they follow us as we go through, clear out the next room, bringing them through, repeating. But practically, all we can do clear the facility out as best as we can. Pushing towards the end however, and we run into 9 marines. And this is actually canonically Chip's Dubbo. Sir, thank god you're here. We've been lost out here for hours. This marine here will survive the entire trilogy and will get off of Halo. Meaning, the nine marines here stand a very good chance of escaping from Halo. I have spent so many hours doing this. Legitimately, this is the hardest, most stressful thing I have tackled yet. The marines die instantly to spores, which easily sneak up on the marines. There's also a good chance the normal flood goons will kill one or two. Exiting the structure, if you go left, they might get stuck on rocks, so you have to go through the middle. And there's always a bunch of flood here, which you need to kill. And you need to run ahead of the group and trigger the flood ambush here. <laughs> For some reason, some marines will beeline straight here, ignoring all the flood. And this ambush is pure hell. A ton of spores rush down on both sides, and the ones on the right go over the rock on a weird angle that's a blind spot for the marines. If they touch a single marine, instant death. But wait, it gets worse. If you make a single mistake or someone dies and you get a checkpoint, you have to restart the entire mission, bruh. If you even reload from a checkpoint, the marines will split into two groups. One will rush to the ambush point, and the other half will get stuck here on the rocks at the beginning. And whoever survives, you'll have to use grenades to get them to move. However, this can all be avoided if you simply run this entire section in one go. All the marines will stick together, but they'll still rush ahead, so you need to perfect everything. But I did it. I actually did it. Blitzing ahead, removing the flood, throwing all my nades, but throwing them tactically to remove the spores. Finishing off the final flood only to be stunned 
All nine Marines made it. That was the nightmare part. The next part is a breeze. Pushing to the structure, waiting for the sentinels to come down and provide assistance. With bated breath, the men were safe. All nine of them. As the mission ends and we get the glorious cutscene. It's confirmed directly in the novel that Fellhammer does save every marine here. Interestingly enough, we never hear from Fellhammer again in either the book or the game until the very end. So what did she do with Chips Dubbo and his squad? It's unknown, but we do know they do not go to Alpha Base. But from here, it can be assumed they would have linked up with Marcus Stacker and Chang. They're safe now. We did it. In the Halo graphic novel made with Bungie in 2006, we learn of two things. The dropship we see in the beginning gets repaired by the Flood as they actually get off of the ring. They crashed onto a Covenant ship, the Infinite Sucker. Very quickly, it turns into some real dead space shit. Actually horrifying. The story follows the Commander, not the Arbiter, you know, this guy. Greetings. We see how the Flood works, coordination, tactics, absorbing memories and knowledge from their victims. They know how to fly the cruiser, maintain the engines, and where to go for more body mass. Though the commander, a uh, true hero, manages to detonate the engines, destroying the ship and the Flood, being the sole survivor. This is when the Covenant's quarantine of the Ring begins. We also see Sergeant Johnson's escape, a pretty gnarly stuff and visually magnificent. Yet he actually manages to get out. There's a hint near the end, highlighting his past as part of the Orion Project. The first attempt of creating augmented super soldiers, but failed, for the adult bodies rejected many of the augmentations. But somehow, these enhancements had the side effect of making Johnson immune to the flood. Although it has no connection, the information was invaluable, and the project was retroactively renamed as the Spartan One Program, and we will never see or hear of Sergeant Johnson until after the destruction of Halo. The Library, everyone's favourite mission. There's a ton of human flood bodies here, but technically there is one casualty here. The only thing I will say about this mission is kill everything. The flood do not respawn. There's only one part they do, but everywhere else, hold your ground and kill all the flood. It's not to clear out the library, but to make sure there's less flood in the ring that could threaten the human survivors. To help in this, save the sentinels as well. It's actually pretty easy, just keep ahead of them. There's only one you have to really go out of your way to keep alive, but once you do, he goes on his merry little way. These robo bros pose no threat to the humans, and regardless, they'll just sit here and defend the library until the end. In the novel, however, about halfway through this gauntlet, there is a marine body around here surrounded by dead flood and bullet casings, mangled to the point where even the flood couldn't make use of him. 343 Guilty Spark called him the other reclaimer. He explained that he found him wandering through a structure on the other side of the ring, and brought him to the same point where we started. Chief was astonished that anyone could make it this far. For John, with his physical augmentations and armor, he was reaching the end of his endurance. Yet this marine did it, with nothing but sheer grit and determination. Chief took his dog tags. Staff Sergeant Marvin Mabuto. There was only one thing that could be done. John gave him a eulogy. I didn't know you, Sarge, but I sure as hell wish I had. You must have been one hardcore son of a bitch. Not known for his speeches, the Chief hoped the Sergeant would have approved. Having done that, we continue the gauntlet, and after removing the flood, we descend and grab the icon. The key to Halo. Around this time, there was a battle underway between the Marines and the Covenant in some valley. The flood broke through and attacked them, and one of them was actually the body of Jenkins. Due to nothing but luck, it turns out the spore that got him 
was severely weakened during hibernation. It began the work to change his body into a combat form, but it lacked the force to completely dominate its host. Twisted in this half-life, a prisoner in his own body. During the fighting, McKay and four other marines attempted to capture one of the Flood. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but due to nothing but chance, they had captured Jenkins. It still managed to break one of their arms, but it was subdued and chained up. The ODST reaction force arrived, gathering the corpses of the Flood to bring them back to Alpha Base for study. Nothing bad will come of this. Well, actually, that's true. They learn quite a lot from the corpses, perhaps too much. All the specimens are burnt, as Major Silver and Lieutenant McKay attempt to interrogate Jenkins to little avail. Major Silver asked, where would the Flood attack from? In between bouts of animalistic rage, breaking one of his own arms in the chain, in a pivotal moment, the monster once again retreated from his mind. Instead of trying to kill himself again, Jenkins stared at them, and in between his breathless gasps, he points down. A cold shiver went down their spines. They realized Jenkins was pointing towards the cave underneath Alpha Base. Within this mission, in certain areas, there are 12 human flood corpses. All casualties are Marines. We get teleported back to the control room, and 343 Guilty Spark tries to make us kill all life in the galaxy. Cortana stops this and actually steals the index. Enough! The flood is spreading. If we activate Halo's defenses, we can wipe them out. You have no idea how this ring works, do you? Why the Forerunners built it? Halo doesn't kill flood, it kills their food. Humans, Covenant, whatever. We're all equally edible. The only way to stop the Flood is to starve them to death. And that's exactly what Halo is designed to do. Wipe the galaxy clean of all sentient life. You don't believe me? Ask him. Yep, quite literally, you the player actually just pulled the trigger and you're about to Thanos snap everyone. Right, getting started after getting Cortana back. We will go on to remove everything that stands in our way. Cortana believes that the Monitor may be able to activate Halo another way. We have to sabotage Halo's generators, which will buy us enough time to activate the self-destruct on the crashed Pillar of Autumn. This will be enough to destroy the ring. After pushing all the way down from the Forerunner ramparts, leaving behind a wall of alien corpses, and watch as all around you turns into utter chaos. It's a mess out there, as Flood and Covenant are engaging everywhere. And it turns out in the novel, there may be marines around here as well. The corpses we see, which I count these ones, they are missing their dog tags. They've been picked up by other marines. Well, considering Cortana didn't know the marines in the fifth mission, it can be easily assumed that there are other groups and holdouts of marines. And in fact, it seems as if these bodies have been hastily hidden from the Flood, according to the novel. It doesn't matter. Moving ahead, we shatter the final generator. After destroying the generators, buying us time, we need the neural link from Captain Keys. And his transponder is within the Covenant ship, again. Instead of flying, we use the teleporter that the Monitor uses. Turns out there was a single metal grate that had been holding back the Flood from massacring the entire base. It was severely weakened as the Flood had depleted hundreds of plasma pistols and rifles attempting to cut through. Given more time, they would succeed. Things are dire, yet there's a plan. Major Silver, the AI Wellesley and Cortana have been in contact, and they know of the plan to destroy the ring. Major Silver will unite and rally as many survivors back to Alpha Base as possible to prepare for an operation to hijack the damaged Covenant ship, the Truth and Reconciliation. The plan is to take the ship, pull it out of Halo's orbit, link up with the Chief and Cortana in space, and fly back to Earth with a captured alien cruiser and a treasure trove of technology and information on the Covenant, the Flood and Halo. It would be the greatest victory for humanity since Harvest. But to do that, they need time. At least 24 hours. 
and the grate will not hold for that long. There are three holes in the caverns below that need to be plugged up. Lieutenant McKay and some ODSTs will pop it open and will descend into the darkness below. There is one casualty here, the captain. At the very beginning, the last vestiges of his mind are being torn to shreds, but there's nothing we can do but to kill everything on the ship. At the section where you're supposed to jump, don't. Use a weapon and snipe all the enemies in this room. Having done that, hold your ground. The flood will be beyond relentless, and you'll be short of ammo. Do not give the enemy an inch. We need to do our absolute best to clear the way for the incoming marine assault. It'll be close, and it'll take a lot of effort. After a while, we've broken the flood, but in the end, only you will remain. After wiping out everything, we descend below. Once we're down here as well, do the same thing. Remove every threat. There's only one area where the spores will keep on respawning, but the rest must be wiped out, slowly pushing through as you carve a bloody path through the enemies until we push to the grab lift. Stay as long as we need to to remove everything. It won't stay this way for long, but we've done our part. Moving through the ship, you can see it's pure pandemonium. This flood hordes around every corner of this dying ship. And when we come into the main hangar, this part here, it's king of the hill. Seriously, for some reason, standing here makes every son of a bitch in the ship rush you. So hold it, out of pure spite. Moving ahead, the only thing that's unique is when you're up here, before going to the end, chuck a few nades, but you see a dropship coming in, dropping off the first of the Elite Commando Covenant. Jump down here, remove the straggler, and then deal with the commando team. No quarter, no mercy. Making our way back to the top, we see Keys. This whole time he's been consumed and drained by a soulless, uncaring, inhuman monstrosity, ripping him apart until there's nothing but a husk. It's time to put him out of his misery. We get the neural link, and we push through more commandos as they try to retake the ship. We deal with the last of them, and we blast our way out to the Autumn. And within Alpha Base, they actually did it. Only one ODST was killed, as they managed to plug up all the holes and repair the grate. They had bought time. Here, they have mustered 312 personnel, 236 Marines and 76 Navy crew. They make their final preparations and board with three pelicans and 15 banshees, while the rest surge out in the ghosts, warhogs, and tanks. By the time they make it to the Covenant Cruiser, Master Chief has already made it to the Pillar of Autumn. Time is against them. The Covenant have seemingly won the battle, as they are in the process of cleansing the cruiser, yet a two-pronged assault was launched, and within a minute the air battle was over, as the exhausted Covenant craft folded under the pressure. Major Silver led the Pelicans as they landed unopposed, as they surged towards the control room. On the ground, Lieutenant McKay led a force against the gravity lift. Using dozens of rockets, they secure the lift and push towards engineering. In 1 minute and 36 seconds, the marines had entered, deactivated the lift and gotten most of their forces on the ship. And they actually brought along the Jenkins flood form. He was chained up and dragged along, along with a ton of flood material on the ship itself. As Major Silver wanted to bring back specimens to Earth to allow the UNSC to study and possibly find a counter to the flood. Yet Jenkins smelt the flood, hiding in the ship. They were here. There are two casualties here, Echo 419 and a co-pilot. After Cortana is shaken up by Chief's garbage driving, we finally make it to the ship. This place is a mess. There's two occasions where the flood constantly respawns, but regardless, kill everything. We want to make sure that these people do not escape from the ring. We cut our way to the bridge and we start the self-destruction countdown, but 343 stops us from saving the universe. <laughs> yep, alright, new plan. We're going to manually destroy the engines and cause a catastrophic explosion. We make our way up and after fighting what feels like a legion of sentinels in flood, we made it and we destroy the engines. It'll be enough to end this accursed ring. 
we run into uh, no one important. It's around this time with the engines exploding that the Marines actually capture 80% of the Covenant cruiser. And on top of that, they actually capture a prophet. Obviously not one of the main three, but still a political and religious figurehead. He refused to abandon the ring. As the ship was ready to break orbit, the flood broke through and attacked. The ship was deeply infected. Lieutenant McKay and the Wellesley pleaded the Major to halt the launch, to commit all the men to try to cleanse the ship, so that if they failed, the Flood wouldn't be able to escape the ring. The Major refused. Halo could be destroyed at any minute. It was now or never. Even with all the time in the world, we know what a single spore can do. Jenkins plunged himself at the Covenant fiber that controlled the engines. He couldn't reach it. As the ship lunged as it was launching, pushed on by Wellesley, McKay approached the cable. The choice had already been made. She took one last look at her fellow Marines and triggered a grenade. Jenkins, unable to speak, managed to mouth the words, thank you. The engine detonated brutally as the ship tilted and was torn apart as it violently crashed onto the ring. In a single instant, all those on board ceased to exist. In the end, all of them. They were just soldiers, hoping they'd done the right thing. With only a few minutes left, the chief is mounting an escape, surging through the entire ship as all hell was breaking loose. Here at this point, a Covenant dropship will come in, trying to rescue a few commandos. Don't let the bastards escape. Get out and quickly wipe the floor of them. Having done that, we need to get out. We make our rendezvous and Echo 419 is killed. Avenge her. Do not let those things get away. With that, drive. Drive as hard and as fast as you can. That's the ship! Move! We need to get aboard now! We're cutting it close! Within the campaign, this is what we see. In total, there are 171 casualties, 29 survivors, and 106 people we saved. Breaking that down, there are 146 marines and 25 crew who perished, 10 marines and 19 crew that survived, and there are 93 marines. 8 crew and 5 ODSTs that we saved. Including the survivors, he is every single person that we saved in Halo. We know that not all of these survivors made it. What we do know, after the game, in the next novel, First Strike, Master Chief and Cortana link up with a pelican in space. Inside is Sergeant Johnson, an Oni officer, a pilot, and an ODST. They would even find the cryotube with Linda 058. She was still alive. These are the survivors of Halo, and we know how they escaped. Besides maybe a dozen people, the entire crew of the Pillar of Autumn did perish, but this was a victory for humanity. The Battle of Installation 4 sparked the beginning of the end for the Covenant. The ramifications here will be felt across the galaxy. I know that some people we saved would escape with Chips Dubbo, Marcus Stacker, and Thomas Chang. How many would make it out though? 14? 7? Even after all we've done, after all this effort, if even just one person made it out because of our actions, then that would be enough. Now, I need to talk about the elephant in the room. The absolute state of Halo. Bungie did the unthinkable, creating one of the greatest games, one of the greatest experiences of all time. Their clever world building, the Flood, a Lovecraftian, godlike, horrific, 
cosmic entity that talks in Shakespearean riddles, the Covenant, highly advanced and hyper-religious zealots, the worst parts of organized government and religion wrapped in sleek purple, the UNSC. Despite only being human, they represent ideas of humanity, stubbornness, self-sacrifice and friendship in the face of impossible odds. The story is balanced perfectly, not only in the big things, but the little things too. The forerunners were godlike, but were consumed by a parasite. They built galaxy-ending weapons of death, yet covered them in life. The Covenant are exterminating the descendants of their own gods they worship. Guilty Spark drones on about protocol, yet breaks the ultimate rule and tries to kill those meant to inherit the Forerunner's legacy. Bungie's lore was perfect, yet they understood two very important rules of storytelling. The only story that really matters is what's in the game and to follow the rule of cool. This story and mythos was built from the ideas of Staten, Nyland, Marty O'Donnell, and all the people of Bungie. Halo will always exist as it was intended by Bungie. Its legacy, its history, its memories will live on. Bungie earned this, but Halo is finished. It ended with Reach. Call it death of the author, whatever you want. But everything after Reach is not canon. They are not the original creators. And in fact, that's why Bungie wanted to leave Microsoft. They didn't want to be forced to make Halo games forever. It's not a good idea, but it does make a lot of money. Halo is just a revenue stream for Microsoft, a cash cow. And to give them a little credit, the average person who worked at 343 never stood a chance. The game was rigged from the start. Honestly, if you want to be specific, what you see on screen, these are the only things that are irrefutably canon. And you know what? The Halo wikis have been infected by this. You know when anything from the Halo TV show is considered a part of the core canon. It says all you need to know. It becomes harder and harder for new people to enjoy Halo's original vision. One day, someone will finally make a Bungie Canon Wiki, where it's information on everything Halo, but strictly made under Bungie or with their blessing. If someone or a team of people actually make this, I will give your work a shout out in my next Halo video. Besides that, we've seen what Soulless Greed does. Halo though, has an ending. Bungie finished things on their own terms, if only others were as lucky. The last thing we see is Master Chief truly missing in action, neither dead or alive. Against all odds, due to nothing but luck, we won. He will always be out there, missing in action. The Believe campaign takes place many, many years after Halo 3. All the suffering, the fighting, he gave us a chance. The last thing of Halo that we will ever see. Decades later, we see humanity alive, thriving. This is what it was all for. In the end, all those heroes, John, 117, Bungie, and you, we had done it. And now, they deserve to be at peace, to be laid down, not forgotten, but revered, respected, and loved. May Halo rest in peace.